In today's Leeds news, Leeds complete deal for Maximilian Vober. Leeds linked with Swiss International. Victor Gio Correas linked again. Lewis Bade enjoying his time at Oxford. And Dan James' possible return to Ellen Road. Morning folks, Jer here at The View and a massive Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas period, a lovely New Year and we're ready to go. Um, with the transfer window, it's open. So all the nonsense is going to start now all over again. Um, it's been a weird one. Apologies for missing out on the video yesterday. I haven't been well for the last couple of days, so I just want to get that out of the way. Um, but should be fine to get stuff done from today on. So we'll have videos the rest of the week and we'll have previews uh, for the weekend's games as well and possibly reviews. <coughs> Not going to do a review of the... Um, um, the game of the weekend today because I missed it yesterday. So we're going to move on. So we'll crack on and we'll start with this. And good news for Leeds is we have entered the transfer market early in January and have completed our first transfer with Maximilian Vober signing until 2027. It's a four and a half year deal for the 24 year old Austrian centre back slash left back slash number six. Uh, and you should go and check out his interview and listen to it if you're unsure of where he can play. Um, lots of negative energy on the Twitter machine today, despite the fact that we've signed the player just because we signed him from Red Bull. Um, the player himself has said that he can play centre-back, can play left-back, can play as a number six comfortably, prefers to play in a left-back position, but is happy to play centre-back as well. Um, has played centre-back most of his career, which he has said outside of the last while where, with Red Bull where he's played left-back. Um, he's done okay. He has um, two goals and six assists for Red Bull. He's done all right. He's a, he's a skipper. He's the captain for the team, so there's leadership qualities in there as well. Um, and what he did say in the line that I took the most out of this was, I will give everything for this club, which is brilliant to see. Um, it's the first one done. It's out of the way. It was needed, whether it's cover, whether it's a centre-back cover and a left-back cover, it's needed. James Marshmont and um, Fabrizio Romano broke this news I think six days ago that this deal was going to happen. Um, James Marshmont has also said that Leeds, that he expected Leeds to move for Pedraza as well, so the natural left back position. Leeds need to get their defence in order. Leeds have conceded too many goals this season. They've scored more goals than anything down near them in, in the bottom half of the table, but conceding way too many goals. Uh, for me, the, the entire back line needs to, needs to rejig and, and, and sort now again new players, new blood, better players coming in. So um, this may be the start of that. We'll see again. He's only 24 years of age. It would be unfair and cruel to judge this kid um, on what he can do for Leeds right now he's 24 he's young and um, he's coming in um with a lot of momentum behind him having played for Red Bull and won a treble three years in a row uh, in Austria which is easy fair enough it's the best team in Austria has to adapt to the Premier League now and we have to just give him time he could make his debut as early as Sunday's game against Cardiff should all the paperwork and clearance go through it's harder for British play for British clubs to get players cleared early and quicker now and um, we saw that yesterday with Liverpool Cody Hackpo as well. They signed him a couple of days ago and couldn't get him cleared. Because it did not in the EU anymore, it takes a bit longer to, to get that stuff sorted. So um should be ready for the weekend. Moving on then, let's talk about some players that have been linked with Leeds. And Leeds have been linked with a Swiss international according to Sky Germany. Ardan Jassari has been linked with Leeds. He is described as a holding central midfielder. And is playing for FC Luzerne at the moment. Now Leeds would have some competition in this player. He is only 20 years of age. Um, he is being currently looked at by Leipzig and by Eintracht Frankfurt and has had interest from Celtic and from Napoli as well. So good club sniffing around him. Um, but according to Sky Germany, Leeds are interested in the player. I keep saying about centre midfielders, I don't expect Leeds to bring in any centre mids unless someone leaves, whether it's a foreshore or a click or whatever happens in that situation. Um, but so far, so good. Clicky's still with us. And, and, you know, he was okay the weekend when he came on as well. So uh, moving on to one that's been lingering around for a while and continues to float around. And uh, Victor Gio Correas from Coventry City, is being uh, touted by Phil Hay as a potential player for Leeds. Uh, according to Phil Hay, Leeds are now moving their attention towards the Coventry City striker, having been keeping an eye on him over the last year or so. Uh, according, to, according to Phil Hay, Victor Orta is very keen on the player. And um, what Phil has had to say is this. He's been linked to four, and Orta definitely has an eye on him. He's kind of been in that ether, the same way of Shea Adams at Southampton has been. To my mind, he clearly scores goals, clearly has something about him. He clearly would fit the model that Leeds go for. £16 million fee is the fee, apparently, that would unlock this. Now, Mark Robbins did come out during last week and said that he had spoke to a Coventry City owner 
and the player's going nowhere. Coventry City do have a suspended points deduction at the moment for the condition of their pitch and the issues they're having with their stadium. Uh, it could be a good time for some to come in and nick him. There's a lot of clubs looked at, at, at Gio Correa's Wolves have been hotly tipped as favourites to sign the player for a long time. But the fact that they've signed Mateus Kuna, maybe they're moving their, their attention away from strikers to other areas of the pitch. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But um, it would be an interesting one to bring in. Championship strikers are not always the hit that everyone thinks. I mean, you know, Chris Wood scored 20 plus goals in the in the championship. I don't think he's ever scored more than 10 goals in the Premier League, maybe 13 one season. Pat Bamford an exception with one twenty goal season in the Premier League, but has struggled with injuries and everything else there. You look at um Vidra as well, killed it in the championship, came into the Premier League, just wasn't the same. So it happens, it can happen that players in the championship can score goals at a certain level, but then not progress to the same level in the, in the Premier League. It's a very tough jump to take. So um I'd be mindful of that and careful on that. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about Lewis Bate, and he is enjoying his time over at Oxford. And according to manager Carl Robinson, he's a bit of a magician. Carl Robinson has been talking him up over the last couple of days, saying the player himself has had a great time with there and is adding an awful lot to their promotion push. They're currently nine points shy of the playoffs, having a bad run of form. But Bate has been key in their attempts to get promoted this season. And what Carl Robinson has said about, about the player is the following. He's one of the best players that I've worked with, and I mean that the problem is we've got him so young, we'll be watching him in three or four years' time running games at the top level. I am sure of that. The kid's a magician. He needs goals and assists. That becomes the reason you play in the central areas of the pitch. Uh, Bates has been doing really well there, continues to, to, to impress people there, and has got two assists so far this season, as we're pointing out. And if you look at Carl Robinson's way of viewing this, Three or four years and before he's, he, but he'd be running games in the Premier League. So, we've got to be patient with these young players as well. If you've got other managers saying, look, give him a couple of years before he's ready, give him a couple of years before he's ready. Saw it work very well with Chelsea with Conor Gallagher. We saw it personally with Ben White, we saw that happen as well. So, uh, yeah, an interesting one. Uh, let's move on then. The last story of the day, and let's have a quick chat. It wouldn't be a January transfer window without talking about Dan James and Leeds. So, brief chat about Dan James. And according to Marco Silva, he's been asked about possibility of Dan James returning to Leeds in January um, he's been in and out with Fulham, he's done some good things, did win a penalty for them last weekend, has done some good things there but has struggled to get consistent starting time at Fulham uh, and what Marco Silva has had to say about Dan is the following James is still adapting to our football club, a completely different style of play until now we didn't speak about this possibility we signed him to stay with us for the season, of course now from yesterday with the open market of course, many things can happen. Um, you'd like to see James get the most he can out there. I wouldn't be opposed to Dan James coming back, but I think his time at Leeds has probably passed, and I think Leeds are moving on from that, especially Jesse Marsh. And if, if the club continue with Jesse Marsh into the new year and if form picks up, I think it looks harder and harder for Dan James to come back in and fit into that system. Um, he struggled to fit into Jesse Marsh's system, and he seems to be struggling to fit into Marco Silva's system as well. So there could be a couple of bits and pieces there. Um, and that is pretty much it for today, folks. Um, a couple of other minor stories floating around, nothing major. We'll cover them over the course of the week if they gain any legs. Uh, and then there's a massive thanks to everyone, as always. And I will see you back here tomorrow morning with some more Leeds news. See ya. Have a great day. Bye.